Welcome back to The Occupation. We're in, here in London um, and we've set up a TV studio in the space and we're just interviewing people who come in to find out why they're here because I think people have got some really interesting stories to tell. So, um, can you introduce yourself? I'm B, and I'm from the Climate Justice Collective. Uh, at the moment I'm working with a group out of, out of there called the Fuel Poverty Action Group. And today we did an action at the headquarters of EDF. Okay, just I'm curious about the transition of climate camp into this new organisation. You know, how did that go about? You know, what's the process? Uh, it, well, it was a bit difficult and painful, but um, so we we um, we had a big meeting uh, in m the end of February, I think, last year, uh, because the whole uh, any cuts and student movement had kind of changed everything. Because a lot of people. You know, took the skills that they had either brought to climate camp or gained while they were with climate camp and used it to sort of help this new generation of activists and then got embroiled in different things and then the, and then there were also various structural critiques that people um, were that were becoming much more forcefully um, uh, articulated and so uh, it was decided not so much that we were going to stop climate camp, but that we just weren't going to be doing any camps in the foreseeable future, like we, that which could change, and that we would try, we would hold on to our existing processes and our existing, well, not our existing processes. We would come up with a new process, but we would hold on to our existing, um, some of our existing structures, like um, you know, we have a great, le you know, legal team and great. Uh, I mean. Generally, when we say this, we mean finances, but uh, uh, and other things, and um, and try and gear it towards uh, more climate activism because we all still felt that climate activism is really important right now and more important than ever. And uh, so, uh, the Fuel Poverty Action Group has actually sort of been around uh, for about a year and a half. We started out back when. Um, Last uh, last two gen two years ago, mm -hmm. um, Climate Camp London had this sort of regional gathering, and it was decided that we should try working in neighborhoods for a bit. And the East London Climate Camp group focused on fuel poverty, and we sort of went with that for a few months, and then the summer came, and uh, then uh, when the winter came. Again, we got back into it under a new name, and then uh, summer came, and so we stopped, and so and then we got back under it with a new name again. So um, so now we're the Fuel Poverty Action Group, and um, fuel yeah. So. so so can you tell us about the action that happened today? Um, you know what what why is that target, and what did you do? Well. Um, Sort of for for your viewers who might not be aware of it, I mean it's quite a buzzword in the news at the moment. But fuel poverty refers officially to households that spend three, uh, ten percent or more of their annual household income on on energy and heating. Uh, and the reality is that in this country, um, you know, an easy estimate would be around one in four households are fuel poor now. That means. Like over 25% of the ho of of the homes in Britain, um, you know, have people in them who are who just simply can't afford to stay warm in winter. So how have we got to this situation? We're in one of the most affluent countries in the world, in the most affluent times that the world has ever been in. How come one in four people are living in food poverty? How could this have happened? Well, I mean, if I was to give a one-word answer, which I don't normally like doing. Uh, it, it would be capitalism is basically the reason why. Um, of, of course, that's with a caveat because uh, you, you know the Scandinavian countries like Finland, um, they still operate. They still operate in a, as capitalist countries, but they have just manage these things better. I think the basic reason is that, but the basic reason that we're looking at is that energy is a commodity, and it's. And as long as energy is a commodity and a consumer good that's accessible to people who are able to afford it, then there's always going to be inequity in the way it's distributed and even the way it's priced. So um, how can people get involved in these sort of campaigns? Um, <laughs> so, uh, well, 
Uh, how can they get involved? Uh, well, our website is Fuel Poverty Action Group. Sorry, excuse me, fuelpovertyaction.wordpress.com. I'm sorry, I'm a bit tired because it's carrying a coffin across London Bridge today. I'm very tired from that. So, <laughs> what 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 did what did the coffin sim symbolise? <laughs> Uh, well, today was the day that the uh, Office of National Statistics, I think is the uh, body, released the uh, statistics for the excess winter deaths for the winter of 2010 to 2011. And that number is 25,700 people. Excess winter deaths means that it refers to the number of people who die in the winter over the number of people who die in other parts of the year. Um, now, a large portion of that, uh, that number dies as a direct result, or as an indirect result, of fuel poverty. Uh, it's, uh, I believe it, Energy Action UK gives the estimate of about 2,700, but they, they admit it's a conservative estimate. Uh, generally, we're talking about mainly vulnerable people, older people, babies, children, um, just people, people on benefits, disabled, it, um, people who have who are forced to stay in their homes all day because they can't even afford to get out. So, um, so c can I ask you why did you target? Um, it was Eon, wasn't it? Why did you target uh, Eon? Actually, it was EDF. Oh, EDF. Um, okay. It actually doesn't really matter which of the big six we target. I mean, the the way that the energy system works in this country is that it's controlled by six companies who are all equally egregious in, in, in the ways that they are exploiting the system that we have. But um, I don't, I mean, it, it's a cause to be angry, I suppose, but it's not a cause to be surprised. And I don't think that we should be, you know, the problem isn't just these companies like EDF. It's also our acceptance that this is the way that energy should be consumed. And that even we even use the word consume when we're talking about energy, like it's a product. When it's not a product, it's a right. Okay, all right. Thank you very much. So, um, interesting people coming to occupations. If you want to meet these interesting people and talk to them in person, come along to one of the London occupations and talk to people. All right, Hamish Campbell reporting for Vision On TV.